based on a wonderful question um, that we have here and kind of get to uh, what we're good at, and that's uh, uh, advising and, and providing some actionable information to, to our uh, audience and our readers, I have a question. You know, what, what advice or recommendations do you have on uh, supporting CDMOs so that they're able to execute better uh, and I'm and I'm uh, editorializing here a bit on uh, time and uh, less deviations and and uh, less process concerns um, in in this space the cell and gene space which is moving so rapidly and where there's a lot of uh, capacity coming on board and perhaps less people to uh, fill that capacity. Any recommendations of what you can do as a sponsor to to uh, have better better outcomes with CDMOs? Hey, hey, Lewis, if I could take a first stab at this. I know you and I had a conversation about this a while back that uh, actually I think um, became an article uh, in Outsource Pharma. Um, the most successful models that I've seen is where it's a true partnership where you're actually going in, you being, you know, whoever the uh, uh, organization that is um, hiring the CDMO to do this. Uh, and you go in and, and develop that relationship right from the beginning and invest your own resources in it. First of all, you have to have your own experienced and smart resources to be able to do that, but then invest them by having FaceTime and actually being on their plant site with them, understanding their constraints and what they're dealing with uh, I know this is hard to do, especially in a talent shortage, uh, but really that's the only successful model that I've seen where uh, it you really get that result that you want and you significantly reduce all of those deviations and all the other problems that you have, uh, which it's an upward spiral. Once you start um, decreasing deviations and other quality issues, uh, that gives you excess capacity to go and further improve things uh, because you're not chasing after deviations all the time. Very good. Another yeah, question. Know, maybe, maybe just, oh, go ahead, Lewis. No, no, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. It, you know, maybe just to jump in there, I completely agree with Ken. Um, you know, it, so first, selecting your CDMO is maybe one of the most important. Uh, exercises you're going to go through in your company, just understanding the magnitude of if you can't make drug, you, you, you have no product uh, or no asset to send out there. Um, and so, you know, this, this cannot be, at least in, in cell and gene, it cannot be a transactional relationship. Um, this very much has to be a collaboration. Um, you know, it, again, completely agree with Ken uh, on that point. And you know, anything that you can do ahead of time uh, during that CDMO selection process to make sure not only that you're going to have that sort of collaboration in place, but to make sure that, um, you know, that CDMO is sharing in your same culture, your same mission. That's something that I, I see is overlooked uh, quite often is where, you know, folks might just kind of go to a CDMO because of a name or something, but you really need to flesh out, um, you know, how that relationship is going to go and make sure that that CDMO is interested in being part of the team for that indication or that asset that you're trying um, to to help and bring forward to the market. Okay, thank, thank you. Thanks very much for that. Can, um, can we, I add a yeah. comment? Please do, Fai. Sorry, so I, I agree. The CMO selection process is probably the most critical step. And yes, it's, the beginning, whenever a CMO makes a presentation, I mean, that's like the courtship stage. So they will present the best of what they can offer. And then once you get into a contract with them, should you get into that position, you know, then you'll realize true colors are going to come out or they, they behave the same way. So what, what's very important if you end up picking not a fantastic CMO is that it be a collaborative type of work project. So no pointing fingers, troubleshooting is gonna have to be, you know, both parties being involved. And one way is to ensure that the CMO has some ownership 
or accountability in some way on, on that outsource project. And what, again, it's, it's, it's not pointing at one another, but di deep dive and solving troubleshooting together. Very good. Yeah, Very good. I totally agree with you, Fai. In fact, I, I think that I, I look at it as almost like a marriage. You know, you, you need to go on a few dates ahead of time to make sure you understand what you're getting into. When you sign that contract, it's like getting married. And, and I'll put a shameless plug for consultants like me in there. Sometimes we're the marriage counselors uh, in these situations, <laughs> and we're happy to do it. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's something else that can help if you don't have the resources to do that. You can go outside and, and fill that uh, that need by, you know, hiring someone from outside to come in and be shoulder to shoulder with them and, uh, and help mitigate uh, some of the, uh, uh, shall we say, spirited discussions. <laughs> I think that's going to be good. my future <laughs> when I retire from Pfizer. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that we have kind of social media we're five star rating system for CDMOs so that yeah. uh, <laughs> you can actually get like feedback across the industry on their performance. Yeah. I'm surprised there, Yelp there's... hasn't done that yet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, there's always thought about how to how to rank the CDMOs, and they're they're all uh, uh, probably not so much looking forward to that. But we certainly do that in our organization with our life science leader and outsource pharma annual CMO awards, uh, and that that's uh, a ceremony and an issue that comes out uh, every spring, where we uh, methodically, uh, based on surveys from people like you who tell us who the best CDMOs are. Um, so some of that definitely gets done. 